morning friends. In the previous classes, we have been learning about the moulding sands, core sands, the patterns and also in the previous lecture, we have seen the different steps involved in the making of a sand casting. Now, in this lecture, let us learn about a an important uh, topic that is the design of the razor. So, this lecture will be on the design of the razor. First of all, what is a razor? Now, we can see this is a this is the casting, this is the casting and this is the pouring cup. This whole thing is uh, compacted inside the moulding right, the moulding boxes. Now, this is the pouring cup, the molten metal will be coming like this and this is the sprue and it will be passing through the sprue and this is the sprue well. Then the horizontal passes is known as the runner, it passes through the runner then it is the this is the gate it through the gate it enters into the mould cavity once it is the once the molten metal is full with the molten metal it raises like this through the razor so this is the razor and here we can see another razor is there so here we can see a top razor and here we can see a side razor so through the razor the molten metal raises so, once the molten metal raises through the razor, we stop pouring the metal, right. So, that is why because it is raising, it is known as the razor. Now, let us see what is the primary function of a razor. It acts as a reservoir of the molten metal in the mould to compensate for the shrinkage during solidification. We all know that all the metals when they solidify right in the liquid level and when they are solidifying they undergo shrinkage this is known as the solidification shrinkage now that time the mo some molten metal will be inside the mould cavity and during the solidification because of the solidification shrinkage there will be a shrinkage cavity will be there and the molten metal which is inside the razor comes and fills that gap and it compensates that gap. Not only during solidification, during the liquid cooling of the molten metal. For example, let us take the aluminum. Aluminum melts at about 660 degree centigrade, but we used to pour it about, about 750 degree centigrade. From 750 degree centigrade to 660 degree centigrade, there is liquid cooling, there is no solidification, but during this liquid cooling, cooling also there is a reduction in the volume inside the mould cavity, but this reduction is compensated by the liquid metal which is inside the razor. So, the razor or the liquid metal in the razor compensates the what say reduction in volume due to liquid cooling of the metal. It also compensates the molten metal due to solidification shrinkage. So, that is the primary function of the razor and it has got secondary functions also. It gives us an indication that the cavity is full with the molten metal. Yes, we keep pouring the molten metal through the sprue and through the pouring cup and through the sprue and it passes through the runner and it fills the cavity. Once the cavity is full with the molten metal, it raises up that is why it is known as the razor because it is feeding the casting it is also known as the feeder. Next one there is another secondary function it also enables escape of hot gases during pouring of the molten metal. Yes, as we keep pouring the molten metal immediately the moisture in the molding sand comes in contact with the molten metal spontaneously this moisture turns into vapor and hot gases will be released and as we keep pouring the molten metal, yes sir, through the razor hole they will be escaping. But this escaping of the hot gases is possible as long as the razor is not filled with the molten metal. Once the razor is filled with the molten metal, hot gases cannot escape through 
through the razor any longer. That time they will be escaping through the vent holes. They also escape due to the permeability of the molding sand. So, these are the functions of the razor. Remember that uh, the primary function of the casting is to feed the casting during the liquid cooling and also during the solidification process. So, that is why it is known as the feeder and it has got the secondary function it raises and gives us an indication that the cavity is full with the molten metal. Because it is raises, it is known as the razor. Now, the question is why design of the razor? Cannot we keep make the razor with some size and do the casting? There is a problem. If the size of the razor is not adequate, what will happen? An undersized razor could lead to shrinkage defects and ultimately result in rejection of the casting. If the size of the razor or if the diameter of the razor is not adequate and the molten metal inside the razor is not adequate to feed the casting, what will happen? Ultimately, during the solidification, there will be shrinkage cavity inside the casting. Then what happens? The casting has to be rejected. Okay, cannot we keep the riser size too large so that uh, this problem would not occur? What happens? An oversized riser requires excess molten metal and results in excess power or fuel consumption for melting. For melting the metal, what we do? We use the electricity or if we use the cupola furnace, we use the coke, sometimes we use the oil fired furnaces. So, that is also a fuel. So, if we are using, if we are keeping a what is a be very big grazer, what happens? It requires excess of the molten metal and to fill this excess of the molten metal, what we have to do? We have to spend excess what is a money and excess time for melting the metal. So, that what is a increases the cost of the production. That is why hence the size of the razor must be optimized using some systematic methods. So, that is why we are going to learn about the what is a design of the razor in this lecture. Now, this is what can happen if the size of the razor is not adequate, right. If the liquid metal in the razor is not enough to feed the casting during the solidification process, a shrinkage cavity will be developed on the surface, sometimes inside the surface also it can develop. Now, these are the types of the razors. Before we learn about the design of the razor, let us see these are the types of the razor. One is the blind razor, right, means it is inside the mould cavity, it is not visible and it is not exposed to the atmosphere. Next one, the second category is the open razors. These open razors are visible outside and they are exposed to the atmosphere. So, these are the open razors. Again in the open razors, there are side razors and top razors. Side razors we have seen, it is on the side of the casting, whereas the top razor is above the, kept above the casting. So, these are the types of the razors. In general, for a side razor, height is equal to its diameter. If the height is h and if the diameter is d, h is equal to d. And for a top razor, height is half of its diameter. If the height is uh, h and if the d is the diameter, h is equal to 0.5 d. This is in general, right. Next one, guidelines for riser design and location. How to what say design the riser and how to locate the riser. The riser or the feeder must not solidify before the casting. If it solidifies before the casting, how can it feed the casting? So, that is why it is known as the feeder. It is like mother feeding her children, right. When the mother makes an important dish, a delicious dish, it mother feeds the children. Only after something is left out, mother will take it. If the mother consumes all the uh, what is a delicious dish, how she can feed the children? She cannot be a mother, she cannot be a feeder. 
Similarly, a feeder or a riser of the casting must solidify only after the casting solidifies. So, that is the fundamental rule. Next one, the volume of the riser or risers must be large enough to feed the entire shrinkage of the casting. Okay, the first rule says that the riser must solidify after the casting solidifies. Okay, but here the riser is no doubt the riser is solidifying after the casting solidifies, but it is not large enough to feed the entire shrinkage of the casting. It is able to feed part of the shrinkage of the casting only during the initial stage of the solidification and at the final stage of the solidification there is no sufficient metal in the liquid metal in the riser. Then how can it feed the casting? So, the quantity of the riser, liquid metal in the riser must be large enough to feed the entire shrinkage of the casting. So, that is the second guideline. The third guideline is the pressure head from the riser should enable complete cavity filling. Right? So, the pressure head from the riser it should enable complete cavity filling. No cavity or no part of the cavity of the mound should be uh, what is a left out without the molten metal. Next one, riser must be placed so that it enables directional solidification. The position of the riser must be such that there will be directional solidification. Now, the question is what is this uh, directional solidification? Let us see, right. So, here we can see there are two cases. In one case, directional solidification is in what is a progress means it is dominating. In another case, progressive solidification is dominating means what is happening here? This is the casting and this is the riser. Now, here there is liquid metal is there. So, this portion, this grey portion indicates the solidified casting. Now, the solidification is gradually propagating towards the riser. As it is propagating towards the riser, liquid metal in the riser is able to feed any shrinkage that is taking place during the process of the solidification. So, what is happening? So, the direction of the solidification is in this direction, right? If the solidification is progressing this way like this. Now, let us take the second case. Let us assume the riser is like this somewhere here the riser is like this. No doubt there will be directional solidification will be there, but here we can see progressive solidification means what is happening here. The solidification in the previous case the solidification is what is a what is a going towards the riser. Now, here the solidification is propagating perpendicular to the what say direction of the solidification. This is the direction of the solidification, even in the what say or solidification is going on in this direction. Now, the solidification is going perpendicular. Now, what happens? The riser is somewhere here, the riser is here, and the uh, what say solidified portion is becoming more and more. And after some time, this uh, what say there will be a very narrow region with liquid metal. Now, suppose this portion is blocked because it is solidifying perpendicular to the direction, then what happens? The liquid metal may not be in a position to what say compensate the shrinkage that is taking place. Of maybe here there is a liquid portion is there, but because of this progressive solidification, this portion is already solidified and the riser is here and here there is a liquid metal and there will be shrinkage cavity. How this can be compensated by the riser? It cannot be compensated. So, here we can see directional solidification and progressive solidification. So, in a solidification of the casting, both the solidifications will be there. But the thing is, if the directional solidification is dominating, that is good, there will not be any shrinkage defect. But on the other hand, compared to the directional solidification, if the progressive solidification is dominating, then what happens? The, there will be or say some portion with the in the liquid state and the riser cannot feed that liquid portion, because somewhere the passage is blocked. Excessive of progressive solidification leads to shrinkage defect. 
So, the riser must be placed in such a way that there will be more directional solidification and less progressive solidification. So, these are the important methods of the riser design. One is the Keynes method, second one is the modulus method, third one is the naval research laboratory method. Now, we will see all these one by one. First, we will see the Keynes method. Now, J. B. Keynes has conducted extensive experiments on razoring sometime during 1949. He examined the presence and absence of shrinkage defects in various castings. Then, he developed a term called freezing ratio, which is defined as follows. Freezing ratio is equal to surface area of the casting by volume of the casting hole divided by surface area of razor divided by volume of the razor. So, this was the definition given by Kane for the freezing ratio. Based on this freezing ratio, he has given some idea how to identify the what is shrinkage defects in the castings. Now, let us see what is that procedure, how to identify the shrinkage defects in the castings. Now, here you can see, now the cane has plotted a graph like this, means he has conducted extensive experiments on the castings and uh, on several castings he got the shrinkage defects and in some castings he got the sound castings and for all the castings he has calculated the freezing ratio and he has also calculated the riser volume to casting volume. Now, with freezing ratio as the x axis and riser volume to casting volume as the y axis, he has plotted this graph. So, this is the plot, what is a graph plotted by Kane. Now, what does this graph tell us? Right? The graph plotted by Kane predicts whether the casting would be a sound or defective one. Now, let us see this graph, here there is a curve. Right? So, when he has plotted taking freezing ratio on the x axis and riser volume to casting volume on the y axis. So, a curve was plotted. Now, all the castings that fall on the right side of this curve will be sound castings without any shrinkage defects. Now, all the castings which are falling on the left side of this graph right, curve will be defective castings with shrinkage defects. So, this was the finding of the cane and he this he has plotted after conducting extensive investigations. Now, the problem is uh, what is the limitation? Definitely this was a very good work, but what is the limitation? The uh, what say this process says that you design some razor and I will tell you whether you will get a sound casting or a shrinkage casting. Oh, you design a razor, yes this is going to get a, this is going to give a shrinkage defect. You design another razor, this is going to give a sound casting. Now, my question is what is the size of the razor with which I can get a sound casting and that size of the razor must be optimum. The Keynes method cannot give answer to this. So, that is the small limitation of this Keynes method. Now, there were uh, this work was further extended. Now, another definition was given for freezing ratio. Now, here x is the freezing ratio. Now, uh, freezing ratio x is equal to a divided by y minus b plus c, where x is the freezing ratio, y is equal to volume of the razor divided by volume of the casting. A, B, C are constants and they depend upon the material of the casting. Now, these are the values of A, B, C constants for different metals. For steel, A is equal to 0 0.1, for steel B is equal to 0 0.03 and C is equal to 1. For aluminum, A is equal to 0 0.1 b is equal to 0 0.06, c is equal to 1.08. For 
for cast iron A is equal to 0 0.04, B is equal to 0 0.017 and C is equal to 1. So, these are the values of the A, B, C for different metals. So, he has given these values for steel, aluminum and cast iron. Now, let us see a problem, how to solve this problem or how to get the design of the razor using the Keynes method. Now, let us take this problem, calculate the size of a cylindrical razor necessary to feed a steel slab casting of size 25 into 25 into 5 centimeters. Height of the razor is its uh, right, its uh, and its diameter are equal, means it is a side razor. Now, how to design the razor means how to get the dimensions of the razor. Now, this is the solution. Now, volume of the casting, but the, the, this is the simple geometry 25 into 25 into 5 that is equal to 3125 cubic centimeters. Now, surface area of the casting, it has got the 6 surfaces, right? Uh, right, 25 into 25 surfaces, there are 2, right? So, 2 into 25 into 25. Similarly, 25 into 5 surfaces, there are 2. So, similarly, actually there are 4. So, so 4 into 25 into 5. So, the surface area of the casting is equal to 1750 square centimeters. Now, let the diameter of the razor is equal to d. Now, what is the volume of the razor? Pi d cube divided by 4. So, here we can see this is the volume of the razor. Now, we have to find out the surface area of the razor. So, how to find out the surface area of the razor? So, surface area of the razor means it is a cylindrical one, right. Uh, under the what if we consider the development of the surfaces, if we develop, right, it will become a rectangle. Now, what is the length of that rectangle? That is the pi d. Pi d multiplied by uh, height. What is the height? Height is the diameter. So, pi d into diameter that is equal to pi d square, right. Plus, what about the top circle? That is pi d square by 4. Means, the top circle we are considering, the bottom circle we are ignoring. Why we are ignoring? Because compared to the surface area of the casting, the bottom circle is very small. That too, it, uh, it is not exposed to the atmosphere. So, that is why we are excluding the bottom circle. So, this pi d square indicates the surface area of the top circle. Now, the total surface area of the razor is equal to 1.25 pi d square. So, we have calculated the surface area of the razor. Now, freezing ratio x is equal to, so this is how Kane has defined the freezing ratio. Surface area of the casting by volume of the casting whole divided by surface area of the razor by volume of the razor. So, that comes to be 0 0.2112 d. Now, there is another definition for y, right. What is y? y is equal to volume of the razor divided by volume of the casting. So, that is equal to 0 0.000251 d cube. It comes to be that much, uh, see it seems to be a complex value, right. It comes to be uh, that much. Now, so far we have calculated two freezing ratios, right. Using one is the using the freezing ratio, this was the uh, first definition of the cane given by cane. So, using this definition, we got the freezing ratio as 0.112 d, and using the another definition, right. So, this is the other definition for the freezing ratio. Using this definition, yes, we have substituted these are the values for the A, B and C, we are substituting those values, right. So, when we substitute those values, it will become this much. So, the previous uh, what say the what say this one x, the previous uh, freezing ratio and the present freezing ratio, we are equating, we are equalizing. Then by we get an expression, in that expression say d is unknown. So, we cannot calculate this d directly, 
only thing is we have to try some value, put some value and try whether it satisfies both sides. So, by trial and error method, we have to substitute several values. Finally, one value will be what is satisfying both the sides. That value is the correct value of the diameter of the razor. So, by trial and error method, we get diameter of the razor is equal to 11.44 centimeters or it is almost equal to 12 centimeters. Now, well, we know the diameter of the razor, diameter and uh, height are equal. So, when the diameter is 12 centimeters, height is also equal to 12 centimeters. So, this is how we have to design the razor using Keynes method, drawbacks of the Keynes method. For each material, the constants A, B and C keep changing. For steel, it is different, for aluminum, it is different. Likewise, for the he has mentioned for the three materials, right? Only for these three materials, we can what say design the razor using Keynes method. Now, it is what say every time it is difficult for us to remember these values. So, that is another drawback. Next one, calculation of freezing ratio is difficult if the surface of the casting is complex, right? So, that is another drawback. Next one, the solution is to be obtained by trial and error method, right? Directly we cannot solve, we have to substitute some value and try whether it satisfies both sides. We have to keep on what is changing till both the sides are equal. So, this time, this takes time and this process is tedious. Next one, so we have seen the Keynes method. Now, let us see the modulus method. This in this modulus method was based on the Nicolas Chorinov's work, right? Nicolas Chorinov, he, he has conducted again investigation in the year 1939, and he found that solidification time was directly related to casting's volume to surface area ratio. Volume to surface area ratio, right? Means V by S A. Chorinov's volume to surface area ratio was termed as solidification modulus or simply modulus. Now, this became the basis for the modulus method. So, Chorinov has developed a term called modulus or the solidification modulus. Just like Kane has developed the freezing ratio, Chorinov has developed a term called the solidification modulus which is equal to the ratio of the volume to surface area. Now, this was the Chorinov's rule, right. In the Chorinov's rule, T s t is equal to C m multiplied by V by A to the power of n, where T s t is the total solidification time, V is the volume of the casting, A is the surface area of the casting, n is an exponent and it is usually taken as 2. C m is a constant which depends upon the molding materials, right. So, this is the Chorinov's rule, T s t is equal to C m multiplied by V by A to the power of n. So, here we can see that volume means volume of the casting, A means surface area of the casting, right. So, it applies to the casting, this also applies to the razor. Means, if we apply this rule to the razor, what these terms will become? T s t means total solidification time of the razor, V means volume of the razor, A means surface area of the razor and N is the component and C m, it depends upon the molding materials, right. What does Chorinov rule tell us? T s t is equal to C m multiplied by V by A to the power of n. What does this rule tell us? A casting with a higher modulus, what is modulus? Volume to surface area ratio V by S A or V by A ratio, right? With a uh, casting with a higher modulus ratio cools and solidifies more slowly than, a, than the casting with a lower modulus. 
here the modulus when the modulus is very high the casting cools down very slowly why means the v by a ratio v by a ratio is high means what the a area is less because area is less v by a ratio is high means when area is less it is less exposed to the mouth wall means less heat is dissipated to the mouth wall that is how it takes more time for solidification compared to a casting or compared to a riser with a lower modulus. Now to fit the molten metal to the casting total solidification time of the riser must be greater than the total solidification time of the casting right the total solidification time of the riser right must be greater naturally if the riser solidifies before the casting it cannot feed the casting. So the solidify must to solid the riser must to solidify after the casting solidifies means the total solidification time of the riser must be greater than the total solidification time of the casting. So that is the second uh, what say information we can get from the Zvarunov's rule. Next one since the mold constants of riser and casting will be equal riser should be designed to have a larger modulus so that the main casting solidifies first. So the third rule says that so uh, be, if we want the what is a riser to have what is a longer solidification time its modulus should be smaller than the modulus of the casting when its uh, modulus will become smaller right it is sorry it is uh, the modulus should be larger right that is what the rule says the riser should be designed to have a larger modulus when the surface area is minimum the surface area of the riser should be minimum then only it will have a larger modulus then only it will take longer time for solidification then that be the case what happens the churno rule says that the riser should have the minimum surface area then only it will have the larger modulus now if we take a what's a particular what's a mass in different shapes maybe in a what's a square prism and a triangular prism and a sphere and a what's a cylinder in all the cases the mass is same the which one which geometry has the least surface area sphere has got the least surface area. So Chernow suggested that the ideal shape of the riser is a sphere but sphere, spherical riser yes ideally it is very good it has the least surface area thus it will have a larger modulus and it will take longer time for solidification but incorporating a spherical riser inside the molding boxes would be a tough task that is why instead of a spherical riser a cylindrical riser would be adopted. So these are the things which we can learn from the Chvarnov's rule. Now Chvarnov has suggested that the modulus of the riser must be larger than the modulus of the casting then only the riser will take longer time for solidification then only it can feed the casting is it not so uh, then that be the case how much the modulus of the riser should be la larger than the modulus of the casting by experiments uh, see the further uh, uh, investigators found that the modulus of the riser is equal to 1.2 times the modulus of the casting mr is equal to 1.2 times mc where mr is the modulus of the riser mc is the modulus of the casting how much time it should be larger it is enough if the modulus of the riser is 1.2 times the modulus of the casting then it is large enough to what say take longer time for solidification and to feed the casting perfectly so this is the relation right mr is equal to 1.2 into mc remember this so these are the moduli of simple geometric shapes. So this is a plate, right? A long plate, right? Its thickness is t, and its length is a, 
and its width is b, then the modulus is 0.5 into t. So, you can see the modulus, now it is no way connected with the length and the what say width, it is only dependent on the thickness, modulus is equal to 0.5 t, where a is less than 5 t. Next one, let us consider another simple shape that is the long bar, where a is the height, b is the width, then modulus is equal to a b divided by 2 into a plus b. Next one, let us take the cube, another simple geometrical shape, this is a cube, right. So, where, right, one side is equal to d, modulus is equal to d by 6. So, uh, calculation I am not showing, but even if you calculate, you will get the same, what say, figures, same values. Next one, let us consider a cylinder, where diameter is equal to d and if you try to get the modulus, right, modulus means volume by surface area, you calculate the volume and you calculate the surface area and the ratio of the volume to surface area and if you calculate, it comes to be d by 6. Next one, a yes, sphere and for sphere, the modulus means the ratio of the volume to surface area, again it is equal to d by 6. Next one, let us consider a hollow cylinder and here we can see this is a cylinder, right. So, inside there is a hole axially, you can see and the height of the cylinder is h and here we can see the thickness of the solid portion is r. Now, in such a case, what is the modulus? Yes, the same expression, modulus is equal to volume divided by surface area and if you calculate the volume and if you calculate the surface area and if, if you calculate the ratio of the volume to surface area, you will get this thing. M means modulus is equal to R h divided by 2 multiplied by R plus h. So, these are the moduli of some simple geometrical shapes. Now, let us take a problem. Determine the size of a side riser for a casting of dimensions 25 into 25 into 5 centimeters using modulus method. Now, now previously we have designed the riser using Keynes method, now we are going to design the riser using modulus method. This is the solution. Now, in the modulus method, what we have to do? We have to find out the rule says that the modulus of the riser MR is equal to 1.2 times the modulus of the casting. So, we have to initially find out the modulus of the casting, then we have to find out the modulus of the riser. Based on the modulus of the riser, we have to find out its diameter. So, that is the procedure. So, first we are going to find out the modulus of the casting. So, volume of the casting V c is equal to just multiply this 25 into 25 into 5 that is equal to 3125 cubic centimeters. Next, we have to find out the surface area of the casting. Surface area of the casting means again, so this 25 into 25 surfaces, there are 2. So, 2 into 25 into 25. Similarly, this 25 into 4, there are 4 surfaces, 4 into 25 into 25. The total surface area of the casting is equal to 1750 square centimeters. Now, the modulus, what is modulus? Volume by surface area, right. So, M c is equal to V c by S a c. V c means volume of the casting, S a c means surface area of the casting that is equal to 3125 divided by 1750 that comes to be 1.7857. So far, we have found out the modulus of the casting. Now, based on this, we have to find out the modulus of the riser. The rule says that the modulus of the riser MR is equal to 1.2 multiplied by modulus of the casting, right. So, this is the modulus of the riser is MR is equal to 1.2 into MC that is equal to, right. So, 1.2 into uh, MC, what is MC? We got 1.7857. So, 1.2 into 7, 1, right. 
So, this is the modulus of the razor. Now, but previously we have seen, we have found out the moduli of some simple geometrical shapes. Among them, cylinder was there. Do you remember? Just to go back. So, what was the modulus of the cylinder? d by 6. So, now we do not have to calculate again, we need not calculate the volume and we need not calculate the surface area again, straight away we take the modulus of the cylinder as d by 6. Now, the modulus of the riser that is a cylinder is equal to d by 6. Now, this d by 6 is equal to 2.1429, yes. From this, we can find out the d, d is equal to 6 into 2.1429. 1429 that comes to be 12.6 centimeters. So, the diameter of the razor is equal to 12.5 centimeters. Similarly, the height of the razor is equal to 12.6 centimeters. So, this is a side razor. So, this is the way uh, to calculate or to design the razor using modulus method. Now, let us see one more problem. During the casting of a certain alloy using a sand mould, it took 155 seconds for a cube shaped casting to solidify. The cube was 50 millimeters on each side. Now, there are two questions. The first question is determine the value of the mould constant in Chernow's rule. And the second question is for the same alloy and mould, determine the total solidification time for a cylindrical casting whose diameter is 30 millimeters and the length is 50 millimeters. Now, let us see the solution. To determine the uh, mould constant, that is the first question. Volume of the cube B is equal to 50 cube that is equal to 125,000 cubic millimeters. Now, area of the cube A is equal to 6 into 50 square that is equal to 15,000 square millimeters. Now, we have to find out the V by A ratio. So, that is equal to 125,000 divided by 15,000 that is equal to 8.333. Now, total solidification time TST is equal to 155 seconds that is given. Now, assumed value of the N is equal to 2. Now, what is the mould constant? Now, this is the Chernow's rule. TST is equal to C m multiplied by V by A to the power of n, where TST is equal to total solidification time that is equal to 155 seconds, V is equal to volume of the casting that is equal to 125,000 cubic millimeters, A is equal to surface area of the casting that is equal to 15,000 square millimeters, n is equal to exponent usually taken as 2 and we have taken it as 2 and C m is a constant which depends upon the mould material. Now, from Chernow's rule, C m is equal to T s t divided by V by A square. So, that is equal to 155 divided by 8.333 square and if we simplify this, it will become 2.232. So, the mould constant in this problem is 2.232 seconds per square millimeters. Ne uh, next problem is to determine the total solidification time. For cylindrical casting with diameter 30 millimeters and length 50 millimeters, volume V is equal to pi d square L by 4 that is equal to 35,343 cubic millimeters, area A is equal to 2 pi d square divided by 4 plus pi d L that is equal to pi multiplied by 30 square divided by 2 plus pi 30 into 50 and if we simplify this, it becomes 6126 square millimeters. So, this is the area. Now, V by A is equal to 35,343 divided by 6,126 that is equal to 5.77. TST is equal to C m multiplied by V by A 
to the power of n that is equal to 2.232 multiplied by 5.77 to the power of 2 means that is the constant. So, if we simplify this it is 74.3 seconds or if we convert into minutes it becomes 1.24 minutes. So, the casting solidifies in a time span of 1.24 minutes. So, in this lecture we have seen the what is the design of the casting. Now, we will see design of the razor. Now, we will see the merits of the modulus method. Now, these are the merits of the modulus method. The method is independent of the material of the casting. Whereas, in the case of the Keynes method for each material there were different constants A, B, C. So, for each material the values of these constants were different. So, there was a lot of calculation. Right. So, whereas, in the case of the modulus method these constants A, B, C do not come into picture. So, that is the merit of the modulus method. Next one method is simple and not like tedious like Keynes method. In the Keynes methods right we go we got a what say a higher order equation and by trial and error we had to solve it. So, that was a tedious process. So, such a process uh, is not this one this is a simple process, but it has got limitation to what are its limitations right. So, this is the demerit of the modulus method. The modulus means the volume to surface area ratio of the casting depends upon the surface area of the casting is it not. We, we have considered the in this problem just for the sake of the what say exercise we have taken simple shapes a rectangular block, but in the uh, real world in the practical applications what would be the geometry of the casting most complex uh, geometries would be there the most complex uh, surfaces would be there then how to find out the surface area of such surfaces it is very difficult that is why in many cases determination of surface area of the casting becomes difficult due to its complex geometry. No problem as long as the what say geometry of the casting is simple we can very well find out the surface area and we can find out the modulus, but once the casting has a complex surfaces then the determination of the surface area would become a tough task at such times use of this method would be a difficult task. So, friends in this lecture we have seen the purposes of the razor, the functions of the razor, types of the razor and different methods that have been developed for designing the razor. They are the Keynes method, modulus method and the naval research laboratory method. In this lecture we have seen and we have learnt about the Keynes method and the modulus method. We have seen the merits and the limitations of both these methods and in the next lecture we will be learning about the naval research laboratory method. Thank you.